everybody welcome back to another episode of the program today we're going to talk about bruce fenton's work about um the out of theory and some of the flaws of the out of africa theory now take all this with a grain of salt of course do your own research come to your own conclusions but this is just actually this is by request there are some people in the comments talking about out of out of um, australia since my video months and months ago almost a year ago i did a video on um the australian uh, the oldest <clears throat> megalithic site in australia and i think the world it's about 55 to 60,000 uh, years old this rock shelter with all kinds of paintings and well it was very obvious that people were living in the rock shelter at the time people wanted to know more about the out of uh, australia theory and especially in recent years there have been a bunch of discoveries that corroborate this theory uh one of which is boats and and um they had they had maritime travel to a certain extent um they were hugging the, the coastlines and and then the, the rock shelter thing that i just talked about and then all these aboriginal stories the aboriginal australian stories in the area uh talking about their origins um, so this article is actually from 2018, early 2018, so almost uh, two years ago now. And but it, but it's pretty uh, it's a pretty good article because it puts it in a nutshell what the uh, out of Australia theory is and why the out of Africa theory is dated and there needs to be a new consensus model. The first thing is uh, defining what the out of Australia theory is. So here's a pretty good. Um, well, the blue line is Homo erectus 1.8 million years ago. That's when they first came out. And then I think some of the dates are pushing back toward even 2 million years ago now. I did an article about that, about Homo erectus, or what they think are Homo erectus remains around the Levant area in modern-day Israel. And then this uh, orange line, about 120 to 100,000 years ago, that's when Homo, Homo sapiens, the, the main precursors to us, the ancient uh, Homo sapiens started leaving Africa. And here's another visual of that. So this one has numbers. So yeah, about around Ethiopia, East Africa, there's 150 to 100,000 years ago. And then they, they branch off into Europe and into Asia and then to Australia and eventually into the Americas. That's the, the model, the, the, the out of eye model, which again is less and less becoming uh, accepted throughout uh, the scientific community. The first humans to reach Austra Australasia had walked from Africa probably close to 60,000 years ago, finally sailed through Indonesia to the continent shores 50,000 years ago. That's the, the mainstream model. One of the first monkey wrenches in this was um, what, I what I talked about in my other uh, video was a rock shelter, 65,000 year old Aboriginal site. In the far north was this rock shelter. So um, this is Australia and then Sahul is the coastline around. So around Northern Australia around here was this rock shelter. And then they printed in Nature, July 2017, human occupation of Northern Australia by 65,000 years ago produced dates closer to 80,000 years ago. So that those dates have been pushed back, um, mainly because of stuff that they found around the site, as well as some, I think some of the things they carbon dated. Because you don't get those years um, those dates rather basically set in concrete unless there's some sort of smoking gun, usually through uh, some sort of carbon dating or thorium dating, even dates further back. Um, so there's some concrete dating there that pushes it possibly to 80,000 years old. That doesn't leave that much time for people to leave Africa already because this is about 100,000 years ago. And then 80,000 years ago, they found out people were in Australia to live in rock shelter. So again, already you can see that this out of Africa model kind of uh, breaking up here. And by the way, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just trying to present both sides of the coin here. Um, out of Africa could be true. It just needs a major overhaul. And out of Australia tends to be that overhaul with all the given discoveries, all, all the given data that's out there right now. So again, nothing is set in stone. These are all, this is just what's on the table and for people who are more peripherally involved that don't go too deep into any of these, um, into this research, it puts it all out on the table for them, for them to uh, make their own conclusions again, uh, like what I said earlier in the video. What does this mean? So it means that they must have left Africa much earlier to have traveled on their long journey through Asia 
down to Southeast Asia to Australia if those dates really are true to 80,000 year old rock shelter dates. Fenton is arguing that there is no conceivable way in which the presence of humans in Australia 65,000 years ago can be explained by migration moving slowly from Africa through Eurasia 60,000 years ago or even 70,000 years ago. Because again, it doesn't make sense. Um, the first thing he genome studies, ancestors of modern Eurasians diverged from the source population between 60 and 50,000 years ago. And then one disclaimer or one thing that you should uh, understand before uh, going further into the research is why the populating of Eurasia is understood to be the outcome of the expansion from Africa. So why is this all, why is out of Africa theory still around? And why is Eura the genetics of Eurasia uh, deeply tied to the out of Africa theory? So it all has to do with, with the age of the modern African genes. So the ancestors of all living Europeans and Asians carried mitochondrial haplogroups M and N. They also carried Y haplogroup CF. So when they sampled modern African DNA, it revealed uh, these Eurasian haplogroups stand back to mutations which appeared in the genome 70,000 years ago. The, what's wrong with this? Well, the reason for doubt now is because the oldest sample of DNA recovered African DNA is 8,100 years old. So because of the fact that it's so young comparatively is we can't geographically place the ancestors of modern Africans 70,000 years ago because they may have already been living beyond the continent at the time. So again, that's, that's one of the main sticking points here is the fact that the, the modern Africans that we've tested hasn't been older than 8,100 years old. So that's a big problem. At the University of La Laguna, they did, the researchers there found that haplogroup L3 entered Africa during a migration. And in a, a paper pu published in December of 2017, it says, quote, carriers of mitochondrial DNA macro haplogroup L3 migrated back to Africa from Asia 70,000 years ago. Again, this is a weird anomaly, right? Here's another quote. It's expected that in general, coalescence ages of HAP groups should, be, should decrease from Africa to Australia. Uh, however, this is not the case. On the contrary, the oldest M and N haplogroups, again, these are haplogroups that are found in Eurasians, are detected in southern China and Australasia instead of India. So the oldest ones come from, from here, not from Africa. They come from Australasia. And associations between longitudinal geographic distances and relative ages of M and N haplogroups run westwards with younger haplogroup ages going to Africa. So when so instead of going from west to east, it's going from east to west. That's what the genetic the movements are saying. Now some people can argue, well, maybe the African migration was way earlier and then they were just heading back for whatever reason. That could be open, but there's no evidence for that older migration. The only one is Homo erectus, 1.82 million years ago. And that is way older than this more, way more recent uh, genetic data that is saying that the further west you go from Asia, the younger the, the haplogroups are. That's a huge fact that is going undetected, that's flying under the radar, that again, if you're peripherally involved, you might miss it. And that might not compute in how you view uh, the, these two competing theories. So humans were already living in Australasia 65,000 years ago. Um, these people carry the oldest variants of haplogroups considered ancestral for all modern Eurasians. Okay. So then between 60 to 50,000 years ago, people carrying the identified lineages began moving through Asia. Okay. Remember, keep in mind that 60 to 50,000 years ago, according to Out of Africa, people were just starting to arrive here. But 65,000 years ago, before that, there was already a rock shelter. There was already uh, uh, legends and myths. There's already cave paintings and art. Um, I, had a, I had a picture of it somewhere, but I don't have it right now. So again, th there's something. It's not adding up here. Um, and then to top that all off, people carrying these lineages were, travel were traveling westward toward Europe, reaching them 45,000 years ago. So these migrants, according to Fenton, are almost certainly Australasian. Um, they definitely carried the, the, the markers of Australasians. Um, but uh, 
just looking at, at the data and what's come out. And th again, this is an article that's two years old now. So um, that throws the whole thing through a loop. Now, when you consider people sharing DNA in South America with people from Australasia and Micronesia and, um, and all the people of the Pacific, then again, you, it makes you wonder, okay, well, how old are these people? How long have these people been around? And how long have they had technology to where they can sail across the Pacific down to Tierra del Fuego and populate South Americans before the Clovis people uh, came into North America, which is allegedly 12, only 12,000 years ago, when there are already a, a, a people in South America, especially along the Andes. How did those people get there? So there, so there, this out of um, Australia theory, although it does, it's kind of calibrated to fit all the the new evidence that's come out, the, the especially genetically and uh, with the climate. Now it opens all these other questions. Well, okay, if that if it, if it's true that us if out of Austra Aus Australasia or Australia theory is true, then. There, it seems not out of the realm of possibility for them to go to from Australia to South America. And then when you think about Easter Island off the coast of Chile, and then all the smaller islands that when the, when the sea level was lower, seemed to be a longer chain of islands, longer land masses, then you can see, and it, as well as uh, thinking about intervisibility, um, where you can just island hop, it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility to just take a, a minor seagoing vessel, even a, a, a primitive raft, and just hug the coastlines and island hop until you reach Tierra del Fuego or Chile, whatever, um, Monte Verde, wherever it was that they landed. So again, um, th this is just scratching the surface. Let me know what you guys think about this. It's pretty controversial. Again, this is just an alternative view of the the prevalent out of africa theory but i think one thing that i can get on board with is there needs to be an overhaul of of what's accepted and everyone's got to get on the same page of of where the genetics have been where they're going where they came from and just get on the same page in terms of this the origins of people and just to let go of of their previous biases and just try to look at everything that's on the table with with an open mind. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I got a new microphone. Uh, give, uh, send some comments my way regarding the article out of Africa, out of Australia, genetics, Australasians, Euro, Euro uh, Europeans, ancient Europeans, um, Eurasians, Africans, all that stuff. Or uh, give me feedback on the sound. Let me know if the sound's okay. Um, and I'll talk to you guys later.